Hi, welcome to the next training session of asset accounting and today's topic for training is asset data transfer. So prior to this, this is probably the last training session of asset accounting. In the previous training sessions, we have covered all the parts of asset accounting where we have went through all the configuration steps. Then we have done the processes testing as well and we have executed each of the processes in the system and we have seen the various reports related to assets accounting where you could find the reports for the asset history report, then the asset acquired, depreciation on assets, scrap of asset, depreciation, forecasting of depreciation for the future years. So all sorts of reports have been have been seen by us in the last training session. Now today's training session is slightly important because this is a part or a topic which you will not come to know normally with any of the other places as a learning path. Uh, this basically comes to you when you are being a part of an implementation project in most of the cases. Asset data transfer is used for uploading the asset data into the SAP system. So this basically happens in case of an implementation project where you transfer the data from the third party software of the, of the client to the SAP system. So over here we will be covering the steps over here on the screen. First is to specify the transfer data, oblique the last closed fiscal year. Next to create the legacy asset, then to change the legacy asset and to display the legacy asset. And after that we will look after to the transfer of balances of assets through the transaction code. And the last part is upload asset data with LSMW. So we'll discuss each of them in detail and mind it the what we have covered in the last you can find it very easily but this part is something which you will find very rarely in uh, anywhere else of. So moving on to the first part that is specify transfer data and last closed fiscal year. So moving over here here we specify the transfer date for the asset data transfer. This date determines the status of posting to be used for the transfer. The posting up to this date will be included in the transfer. This specification also determines whether you want to perform the transfer during the fiscal year with transfer of posted transactions oblique depreciation in the current fiscal year or you want to transfer the data at the end of the fiscal year. So it depends how you want to transfer the data. You want to transfer the data in the mid of the fiscal year at the end of the fiscal year. So that is a strategy call which is being taken by the business or the client side and accordingly that particular activity is being done. So if the transfer date is not the last date of the fiscal year, the, S, the system interprets this as a transfer during the fiscal year. So the system cannot transfer any historical transactions. It can only transfer cumulative values from the end of the last fiscal year and the transactions in the current fiscal year as well. So for an example, if you take that suppose we are transferring the data on 31st of December 2014 or even you can take it as the transfer data as suppose I take it as uh, 31st of March 2014 as an year end which better is to understand by that which is the last closed fiscal year that is 2013. So in the system we need to put that date which is also known as this transfer date or also known as the takeover date. So for maintaining that we need to go to the SAP screen. So we'll be moving to the SAP screen over here so as to check this particular step to specify the transfer data 
So in this we need to execute the transaction SP arrow. Enter. Then we need to go to the SAP reference IMG. And in SAP reference IMG we need to go to the financial accounting new and then to the asset accounting. In asset accounting we need to go to the asset data transfer. So we can go over here. And in the asset data transfer you will find the parameters over there. So we need to go to the parameter expand it. And in parameter there is date specification. And in date specification you will find specify transfer oblique date closed fiscal year. So you can see the path is slightly long. We need to go to the financial accounting new, then to the asset accounting, then asset data transfer, then the parameter for data transfer, then data specifications, then specify transfer date or the last closed fiscal year. So you can transfer the data in the mid of the year or even you can transfer the data at the close of the fiscal year that is the last close of the fiscal year. So in normal situations whenever we go for any of the implementation process we always prefer to have a last closing fiscal year as the data transfer that date. So over here when you execute this option now so you can see over here the date has been maintained on the screen. So for the company code the one which we will be working is this where the takeover date has been maintained over here as December 31st 2013. So if you want you can change the date. So specify the takeover date over here. The company is going live with the with the very next day. So over here whatever the takeover date we assign, we assign that is the last date of the project and on the very next date the, the particular software will be on the go live for the company. So for example we take it as the go live date as to be suppose we take it as 2014 uh, over here we shall take it as October 31st 2014 or even if you want you can take even 12 no issues in that. So let's take up the the takeover date as to be December 31st 2014 and we will try to upload the data before that but after that this particular transaction will not allow you to transfer the data that is the legacy data from the third party software. So this is one of the step very important step of taking the takeover date, assigning the takeover date over here. Once you assign the takeover date, the system will not allow you to upload the data after this particular date. So once we have taken the date over here, now we can go and we can save this screen and the date will be changed. So you can see that the legacy data transfer date is not in the past. So it always asks you that it should be in the past, not at the future. But let's take it at the future date. And we'll try to upload the asset on this particular date, that is December 31st, 2014. Now, once we have created this particular configuration, now we'll be moving up to the next step, that is create legacy asset. So now what is this legacy asset is all about? It is nothing but the asset master data that we used to create earlier with the transaction AS01 and it also includes the transaction data. So this particular step create change and display legacy assets are used for uploading the asset data in bulk or in masses in mass for from the third party software to the SAP system. So whenever we go for a goal for an implementation project that means that the client has been using some other software prior to that and now he has been shifting from that software to, to the SAP software. So we need to transfer all the data from that 
third party software to the to this particular SAP software. So you cannot go on punching one to one transaction every time in the SAP. So SAP provides you to upload the data or to create the legacy asset or which were there in the third party software in the screen over here. So here you enter assets from the legacy system with the balances. The entry of these asset masters will not update the reconciliation accounts in the general ledger. So whatever the transactions you post over here that will not be posted to the accounts in the general ledger part. You need to upload the master data over here with AS91, the depreciation area and the takeover values. The takeover value means the values which you are taking up from the legacy system that is the third party software. So that is the value that is the takeover value you are you are taking up from that particular third party software which will be uploaded or which will be taken up in the SAP system. So for updating the value in the general ledger a separate journal entry has to be done so that that particular value will get updated in the accounts as well. So moving on to this particular screen over here AS91 it's simple step but it's basically an integration or you can say it's a combination of master data then the depreciation area and the takeover value. So let's move on to the screen for creating a legacy asset that is slash n AS91 enter so you will experience that it is the same screen which you used to fill at the time of AS01 but there is one common difference in that this and that in this you will find this takeover value tab over here on the top that was not there in the transaction code AS01 now moving up you can take the asset class so suppose I take the asset class as Okay, you can go and select over here display all. So it will give you the list of all the different asset classes for the company code. So now you can search your company code over here that is 1010. So you can see over here land. So we'll be selecting land over here and we'll create uh, or you, even you can want you can take building over here as well. So let's take building over here as an asset class and the company code is 1010 so once you have taken this now you can click on to the enter and it will take it to the next screen it is the same screen while we create the asset master so over here you can fill the detail suppose I take the detail over here as land US and over here if you want you can put the capitalization date so you can see over here the capitalization date is a mandatory field over here there is a tick mark on this part so this is a mandatory field which you have to fill over here on the screen why because the asset which you are taking up over here are being taken up from your legacy system that is the third party software from where you are migrating to the SAP system so obviously that particular asset will have a capitalization date so suppose I take the capitalization date over here as December 31st 2014. Now moving to the next we will move to the time dependent data. So in the time dependent data if you have any information so you can fill it like I took the business area. Even you want you can take the cost centers also. So whatever the cost center you want to have. So we'll take the cost center over here. So the cost center is this that's been taken up as well. Now we can move to the allocation. We don't need the allocation. Now we can move directly to the depreciation area. So in the depreciation area you need to select the depreciation key. So let's take the depreciation key as PM10 and you can take the life of the asset over here as well. So now these all the things have been taken up and the depreciation start date has also been assigned over here. So once these all things have been taken and we have also filled the depreciation area over here. So the master data has been filled. 
the first few all the tabs then the depreciation area has been filled now the next part will be going for is the takeover value so if you remember your screen of asset master creation these are the information which you used to fill which we have filled just now the new extra tab in the transaction AS91 this particular transaction has is that over here a new tab is there for takeover values so over here at the same time we created the master data we will also put the takeover value the value which has been taken up from the third party software in the SAP system so when you click on to the takeover values it will take you to the next screen and over here you can see there are three different business area column on this screen so the first column over here you need to put the gross value of the asset means the value at which you have purchased the asset so suppose I have purchased an asset for ten thousand dollars and then the next field which you have to take is the accumulated ordinary depreciation that means the depreciation which have been charged on the asset till date so suppose I take it as that thousand dollar has been charged as accumulated depreciation till now the same thing I will be taking up in the next screen also and the accumulated depreciation again will be thousand so this is what you need to fill over here these two fields and system will automatically calculate the net book value in case there is any unplanned depreciation even that also you can fill it over here so once you click on enter you will see that the net value has been updated and over here the same value has been taken up no depreciation has been taken because the third column the third depreciation area has a depreciation key as zero percentage so once you have taken all those things now you can go and you can save this screen and your asset legacy data has been prepared so you can see now that the asset number has been created so this is about the create legacy asset now if you want to change the legacy asset later on once you have posted now I want to change certain things in that so I need to go to the transaction AS02 so once now we can move on over here to the next transaction AS92 sorry so AS92 is for change legacy asset enter so we can take the asset over here and then we can go to master data if you want to see the master data if you want to check the depreciation area you can go to the depreciation area over here and in case you want to change the takeover values you can go over here to takeover values tab so let's move on to the master data one by one so I have moved over here to the master data over here on the screen and if you want you can change any of the things over here right now so if you want to change the capitalization date right now you have the option to change the date over here right now suppose I made the date to be changed from December 31st to 1st of December and that is what has been done on the screen and you can see the cheat has been changed and even the first acquisition on was also been changed so you can change the date till the first depreciation run has not been executed in the system once that has been done you will not be able to change your capitalization date later on moving to the next time dependent data enter so you want to select plant over here then again you can go and you can select your plant with this particular tab if there is any plant option over here so you can see there are plants on the screen so suppose I take the plant over here as 1010 that is plant 3 so this will give you a better idea to track your assets as per your plant wise so that is what we did and similarly if you want to change any depreciation areas over here you can come to this and you can do that as well so you can want to change the depreciation over here you can even change those but right now I will not be changing anything over here on the screen now I will be moving to the takeover values so once I click on to the takeover values the system take me to this particular screen where I just have filled the details so over here you have the option right now to change the takeover values over here now if 
you need any correction those corrections can be done with the change legacy data transaction code so once that has been done you can again save this screen and your legacy master data has been changed so this is the second transaction code now similarly you can move to the third one display legacy asset so we can move on to display the legacy asset where we can only display the details in the legacy asset number so the transaction code for that is AS93 enter so once you enter over here you can see the the description over here that that is display legacy data so over here you can go to the master data and you can see the display over here the details you can go through just as a display part you cannot make any changes in this so these are only for the display perspective over here so as to have a look at the details filled in the asset master and again you can go to the takeover values as well and over here you can check the takeover values in the screen as well so that is this all about the the create legacy master data change legacy master data and display legacy master data so now these changes have been done but whatever the values we have uploaded on the screen in the takeover value that is the the cumulative acquisition value is ten thousand dollars and the accumulated depreciation is one thousand dollars these are only in the asset accounting part these values have not been updated in the GL account that is the accounts in the in the trial balance part so we need to update this value also in the ledger part as well then only these both will be reconciled and your accounting will be proper so moving on to the next part is transfer balances so transfer balances here in this step we post balances to the GL account which have already been defined as account reconciliation accounts and those GL has already been assigned in your in your asset class in the account determination part when we did the integration of the GL with the asset class so you can only post entries in the company codes which have implemented the asset reconciliation with the asset part so the transfer of legacy asset data using the legacy asset transaction AS91 that is the create legacy asset part does not affect the balance of corresponding reconciliation account in the financial accounting so it means whatever the values we have taken up in the create legacy asset that is not been updated with the accounts with the values in the accounts uh, in the financial accounting part therefore no automatic balance formation or reconciliation takes place and you will need to manually reconcile the balances over here so whenever we take the asset transfer or asset data transfer we need to update the values manually in the financial accounting accounts as well so to update those values you can ascertain the asset accounting values using one of the reports of the asset list that we'll be looking off to so how we can update the balances in the GL account that's what we need to check so to have that we need to go to the transaction OASB so once we move over here slash in OASB enter we need to put the document date so the document date will be the same as of the takeover date you must have to take care of that that the takeover date and the document date over here and the posting date will be the same the document type over here will be AA that is asset accounting or even if you want you can take it as AB that is accounts document accounting document so once you have taken these all filled over here the document date posting date period company code and the document type you can enter on the screen so once you enter this system takes you to the next screen over here and now you need to select the GL account in which you want to update the value with respect to the asset transfer data which we just did for land 
so for doing that we need sorry for building we did so we need to select the GL over here so for selecting that GL we need to go for selecting the list of the GL so let's check the list of the GL from there whatever the values we need to post so whenever we post and or we we go for an asset transfer data what we need to do is we need to update the building account with the with the value that is ten thousand dollars which we have put up over there and we have assigned one thousand dollars as an accumulated depreciation so that one thousand dollars will go to accumulated depreciation on building account so we need to check both those GLs so for that we need to go to the search the option over here enter so now we'll get the list of all the GL accounts and then we can decide to which GL we want to upload the values so we need a building GL over here because we need to have the value updated in the building the next GL which we need is the accumulated depreciation that again will be a part of your this okay seems the it's been copied wrongly so these are the two GL which I will be taking up over here and apart from that I will be taking one more GL that will be the upload GL so that is not there on the screen as of now so we need to create a GL for uploading of the asset so upload GL is a different which is used only for the uploading of the balance or you can see the asset transfer data only that's it that GL is after that been closed for usage so the asset which we will be creating is 999990 they can go to create and then we can select this as a balance sheet item we'll go to the balance sheet so okay balance sheet item is from 10,000 to sorry so we need to change the value now again slash in fs00 enter so we'll be creating a GL that GL will be for upload so this is the GL which I will be creating for uploading of the balances so this is will be a part of an asset okay so again this has not been allowed to me why is it I'm taking something wrong so we'll be creating this GL for uploading the asset values to the GL account and the name of that GL will be asset upload this is what the name is normally been given to the GL from which the values are uploaded in the SAP system and once the values are uploaded these GLs are closed to be used in the system so it is what we have created one and saved so this GL has been created on the screen now and we can take this GL over here now so what I will be doing is I will be taking this 3 GL where the first GL is of building account so I will debit the building account with $10,000 as I have uploaded the value in the AS91 for building $10,000 as the acquisition value and then the depreciation I have assigned is $1,000 so the same $1,000 will go to the accumulated depreciation account over here and the balance which is left will go to the credit side of the upload GL that is the asset upload GL so that will be coming up over here whatever is left 
okay so that I will be taking up over here now sorry I did a small mistake so this will also be created now so now you can see that the debit is equal to ten thousand dollar and the credit is also equal to each other so this is will be the entry which will be posted in the system so that the asset transfer which we just did a while back with AS91 the same values will get maintained in the in the accounts in financial accounting as well so this will be the entry which can be done and even if you want you can put the business area over here and even you can segregate the balances on the basis of profit centers if you want the profit center reporting as well so once this has been done now we can move and we can save this screen over here okay it asks you for the text code so I think I need to maintain the text code so now we can save it again and now you can see the, the asset transaction was posted with document number as in the screen over here that means that the asset transfer values now has also been updated in the GL accounts in financial accounting as well so this has been done with the transaction OASV so this is the asset trans data transfer which is done in the asset accounting part but now this is something which is a manual part so whenever we do any kind of an implementation project we have to transfer huge data huge asset data from the legacy system to the SAP system and we are not afford to go and create one-to-one -one legacy asset and keep on going to update those values into the GL account with OASV so that is why SAP provides you a different and unique tool that is asset upload data with LSMW so this LSMW is nothing but just a recording and by which it provides us a tool that we can upload a huge data within a fraction of minutes in the SAP system so it is nothing but the same transaction the standard transactions are used in this particular LSMW and with the help of that we upload the data into the SAP system so such a scenario we'll be doing up over here right now and we'll see how that particular data are uploaded into the system so now we can go to the transaction LSMW now this LSMW is known as legacy system migration workbench this particular tool is used whenever we are going for an implementation project and we need to transfer the data from the legacy system of the client that is the third party software in which they have been using their accounting and all to the SAP system so with the help of this tool any data can be transferred from the legacy system to the SAP system it doesn't matter whichever module it belongs to so you can transfer the assets you can upload the values of anything like in FI you can upload the value of anything the master data that is GL master customer master or vendor master or even the asset masters you can upload the transactions as well which we did uh, any any standard transactions which you have studied till date any of them can be used as a standard and we can create a program so as to upload mass data on the screen over here so it's a very very unique tool from the SAP side so as to save time and efforts and get the result in a very quicker manner so it's a very efficient way out so to upload the data you first need to create an LSMW so we'll not be creating an SLW I will be uploading the data with an already created LSMW which I have created and we'll see how the, those data are uploaded so this is the project in the LSMW where the name of the project is ZAS91 underscore FAR and the sub project name is FAR underscore upload and the object name is FAR underscore upload so once you went over here you need to go to the execute option 
and in the execute we will not discuss about the first steps we will directly move from the specify file steps the earlier steps are related to the creation of lsmw but we will not be discussing that how you can create an lsmw we will discuss about how we can upload the asset data in the SAP system with the help of LSMW in just a quick succession of time where you have got a huge list of data and we don't have to do any manual activities for that so moving up over here we first will take a file for that and before having a file we'll first check the report with AR01 for that particular asset class for which we will be uploading the data so suppose I am going to upload the file on the screen so now on my desktop I have a file that belongs to land so before uploading this land file over here in the system we can have a look at the file what it is all about so the file gives you the detail related to the asset class then the company code and the asset description and additional description of asset and then the other details like the asset capitalization date that means the asset when it was been purchased then it gives you the cost center plant then the block key and then the acquisition value and the accumulated depreciation over here so this is a file which I will be uploading on the system and we'll see how this is been done so before uploading the value for the asset class land let's first check the asset value over here on the screen that is there any any asset as land on the on the particular company code already or not so we can execute the transaction code that is the report to check that AR01 we need to take the company code over here then we need to take the asset class for land so the asset class for land over here is PA013 and now the date I will be taking up is 01042013 sorry 2014 and now I can execute my report over here and we can see it says okay the report is invalid okay says that uh, AR01 enter okay let's take it till 31st March 2014 now over here and you can see there is no data on the screen as of now and even if we try it for 1st April 2014 does it show any value okay no value is off on this system so now we can move on to upload so let's move on to execute the LSMW we can move over here to the execute part and now we need to select the specify file over here so this is the excel file which we will be uploading so let's take few of the examples from this we'll be taking not much but just uh, a handful of data suppose I am been taking this so what I am doing is I, am, I have created a template for the asset master that is from over here till over here this is the asset master data and then after that the next part over here is the asset that is the block key that block key is a part of a depreciation area and then this is the takeover value over here these two column O and P which will be taken up as a value in the system so let's move up to the screen and I'm taking up the values from uh, not much we'll be taking only the 12 data from this particular Excel and we'll be uploading it so to upload we need to copy this data from over here and we first need to execute a text file so we are creating a text file over here now assets enter and now I will be copied data from the Excel file to this particular text file you can see I have copied the data 
and now I am copy pasting the data on the excel file over here and we can save the excel file that text file over here on the screen so the test file I have saved and I have now uh, closed the file so that I can upload it onto the system so to upload we first need to go to the specify file we can execute this once you need to select this and then we have to execute this over here so once you execute now you a new screen come up to you where we have to specify the file which has to be uploaded so for that now we first have to go to this display change option so once we move over here you can see now it is in the change mode so once it is in the change mode only then we can assign the file to it so after that we need to go to this option over here we have to double click on to this and a new screen comes up to you so over here we need to go to execute the file and you can see over here the text file over here on the screen and this is the text file which we need to upload so I have selected the text file and now selected so once the file has been selected on the screen to you you can see that then we can go to continue so we have selected the file over here and now we can move to save the option over here now so the file has been saved with the path now we can go back and then you can see over here the system automatically takes to the next step so if the process for LSMW is correct the system will automatically move to each step you don't have to select the next next item or the next step it will be automatically selected so now we'll move to assign file so for that you need to go execute and then you have to go to this change mode so once you are in the change mode you need to save the file over here and then again we have to go back so this is what the assign file has been done so the file has been assigned to the link now we'll move to the read data so in the read data part again you have to execute the file so once executed now a new screen comes in front of you for import data for ZLAS01 underscore FAR we have to execute this part again over here so once we have executed allow so you can see over here the system shows you that 12 data has been read written on the from the file so the data we copied in this screen you can see over here the data that we have taken are exactly 12 you can see the count over here is 12 so the same 12 data we have pasted on the text file and we have uploaded the text file which is reflected over here to you so this 12 data has been read by the system so now we can go back once more then we can move to the next next step that is display read data now we can again execute this step enter so over here you can see from the file the data has been picked on the screen so to validate you can click on any of the data suppose I click on this and you can see the details onto the respective fields and you have to cross check that each fields values has been reflected correctly on the screen so you can see over here it seems ok to me and if it feels ok to you in that case you should proceed to the next step otherwise you have to go back and you have to check that the file has been uploaded correctly or not and in that case you have to diagnose where the things were going wrong where the which step is wrong in that so for me this file is okay so that's why I can move back to the next step so once again have to go back so now we have moved to the current convert data and now we have to execute the file again 
so this is the screen which comes up to you lsmw workbench convert data so over here you have to execute this file again so over here again the system reads the data from the file and at this step the system converts the data for upload so now we'll move back so the next step over here now is to display the converted data so we'll again go for executing it and once we execute and click on to enter again the system shows you the data which has been taken up so now you can again cross check this data which will be uploaded as a converted data in the SAP system so I can click on to this and now we can check the values over here that everything is correctly picked as per the fields or not in the system so once the data has been validated on the screen that it is okay even you can go back and you can compare with your excel file with the data and then we can move back again going back so now you can see we are on the second last step of the upload program so over here we have to go to the create batch input session now we can execute this batch so once you execute now we need to select keep batch input folders and then we have to execute this particular part over here and so you can see over here the information has been generated that one batch input folder with 12 transactions have been created continue so the batch has been created now and now we have to run the batch input session so as we will go for running the batch input session the values will get uploaded in the asset class of building and that we can see with the report then so next move on to run the batch so as I clicked on to the batch and executed it took me to the second screen again now that is the batch input session overview so in this you can see number of batches are there but there is a one batch on the first which is a new batch this is a new batch which we have to execute so as to upload the value into the system so we can select this batch over here once you have selected the batch we need to go to the process click on to the process and then we need to select the display error only field over here the tab and then now we can move on to process the transactions so once we on move on to process the data will be uploaded in the system and if there is any kind of an error while uploading that particular error will be displayed that's why we have selected this display error only so if there will be any error then the system will show us the error on the screen else it will be uploaded directly so now I am moving up to the process when I selected the process now you can see that there is a date error so I can enter on the screen so you can see now that uh, the data are in the upload phase but there are certain concerns with the date that's why at the date the system gives an error because the date has not been picked in the same format but yet you can click on to the enter over here and it will keep on select taking the date over here in its own format so you can see now the data has been uploaded and once the data is uploaded the systems give you this message over here that the processing of batch input session is completed so you can select on the session overview so as to have a look of the batch so this was the batch we have executed and you can see over here that 12 data has been uploaded successfully and none of the data have got any kind of an error so this field over here in the red this is termed as the transaction with 
error so any transaction which has any kind of an error with that will not be uploaded and that will be marked over here so right now there is no error on the screen that means the assets have been properly up, uploaded in the system so now we can go back and we can check the asset report for building and we'll see that the values have been uploaded or not so we'll, up, we'll execute the transaction AR01 enter we need to take the asset so you can check now we need to select the company code the asset class and the date over here and once we have selected the date now we can execute the report and you can see now that the asset has been uploaded over here on the screen so this is how the assets are uploaded into the SAP system these are the different assets uploaded even if you want to match the upload balances over here on the screen the total of it is 15773625 you can match this balance with your excel file that is over here these are the data been uploaded and this is the total sum of that is coming up over here 15773627 this is what the value is over here on the screen and the value has been matched that means the data has been uploaded correctly with the LSMW so this is how you need to upload your assets with the transaction AS91 LSMW but how to create the LSMW is the thing which you have to learn before that so this is basically all the parts in the asset accounting so in today's topic we we did the asset data transfer where you should know how the asset data transfer is done in any of the implementation project and what is the legacy assets why we need to create a legacy assets how the balances are transferred into the GL account in case of an asset data transfer and when you have got a huge data of asset upload in the system how you would be uploading those with a shorter period of time without going for any manual activities so for that there is a scope of going for the LSMW so as to upload the asset data into the system so this was been the part of the asset accounting and we have completed the asset accounting today so you can go through the asset accounting part again and again and practice it so all the best thank you